So get the processes under control by working with employees and managers to eliminate process problems. Now I also teach lean construction. Lean construction is all about process. It's all about optimization. It integrates safety, quality, and production. How many people are in the Lean Construction Institute? I know Skanska is. Who are you with? Unger Construction. Unger. Okay, great. It's the next big thing. I don't want to get off topic, but as far as emerging issues, we're really a big proponent of Lean Construction. And why would we want to be in the Lean business? Lean jobs, 50% safer than non-lean jobs. Not five, 50% better. 50% better quality. What do you say those statistics again? 50% safer, 50% better quality. You get the job done 10 to 20% faster with no overtime. And here's the kicker you make about another 10 to 20% profit. You reduce your direct cost by 10 to 20%. And if you're working on a 3% margin, and by being lean, I can make another 10%, now maybe the subs are gonna participate in that savings. Where else can you quadruple your fee with one idea? Nowhere. Lean is the industry. That's where the industry's going. So if you're not lean, you're going to be forced to being lean because the market's going to keep going and you're going to be static. So that's a, a no, whole nother presentation, which again, Kate, if you're interested in having some more information on lean, I'm the guy. Doug and I are the guys. One of our customers, very Smart guy, used to be one of our customers, now he's working as a consultant for McKinsey, traveling all over the world. He uses the analogy of a coin. One side of the coin is quality management, the other side of the coin is lean construction. They're kind of close. You know, I teach both, and the worst thing that you could do is try to bite off quality management and lean construction at the same time. You will confuse everybody. Quality management is simple compared to lean construction. So if you think you know, quality management, consulting, and the training involved, it's ratcheted up about four to one, I think, in lean versus quality. Here are the benefits, and we talk about uh, rework. How many people track rework? You track rework of your own self-perform work, and then you track rework of the subcontractors, even though it's free to you. The best practice is to track it. Because really, when, if you're a non-self-performing GC, you're relying on the subs to do the work. And to get buy-in from the subcontractors, one of the hooks or one of the messages is that you, Mr. Subcontractor, are gonna be a better subcontractor because you're gonna experience less rework if you have a controlled process and, and train your people to do it right the first time. It minimizes punch lists. There's some confusion in the industry, you know, as I teach this, what's the difference between a punch list item and a non-conformance? A punch list item would be like a smudge on the wall, a nick in the paint, a non-conformance would be the windows installed upside down. Something's got to come out and go back in. The wrong material, non-conformance. And you say, hey, Rich, how can a window go in upside down? There's no up arrow on a window, typically. And so it goes in 50-50. And then they see these holes and they say, well, holes and windows? I got to caulk those. And those are the weep holes. So you've just com compounded things. So it's a safer job, it re reinforces positive behavior, and we all want to be part of a winning high performance team. Remember back when we were being selected to be on the ball team, and you always wanted to have the best players on your team, right, because you wanted to win. Well, it's the same concept here, that if you have um, more predictability, 
less rework, less starting and stopping, you have a more productive job, and in the lean world, that's called flow. You have flow in your project. That leads to high performance. And then, of course, since we're an insurance company, we always have to throw in a little hook there about the insurance. If you stop having claims, ultimately your policy premium will come down. Just like when you crack up your car, will your policy go down? Probably not. You may be canceled if you wreck your total your car. In our world, if you have no losses this year, our underwriters say, yeah, they may be good, but they may be just lucky. You have the second year, no losses. The underwriters are thinking maybe you're less lucky and you're maybe more good, but they're still not convinced. Two years is not a trend. Three years is a trend. So three years with no losses, now we're starting to get a feeling that you're not just lucky, you are good. That's when the light bulb goes on, and I can't, I'm not an underwriter, but that's generally the thought process. I don't know, Doug, if you want to comment on that area of cost of insurance. It will differentiate you ultimately as you have no losses. I think that's pretty safe to say. QC, QA, quality management system, and a quality management program. We're going to talk about each one so that you understand the differences. QC are inspections, tests, and the documents. It's the easy part. The hard part is quality assurance, which is how effective is the QC program and that you're validating that it is working. The two together are the quality management system. You can't just have QCA, QC without QA. And if you have a written program, this is our manual. This is the quality management manual. It has all of these things. So let me give you two examples. We're all familiar with concrete. Let's say you're pouring a footing pour for a building, multi-story building. You have the concrete testing lab come out. They take the requisite number of cylinders, whether it's four or five or six. They break them at three, seven, 14, 28 keep one as a spare, calibrated machine, everything's great, but there's a low break. Now, if they reported the low break, then the system would be validated. Then the superintendent wouldn't pour the second story because we've got a low break on the footing. But in the case where he doesn't get reported, that's the breakdown, and he's now up on the second floor because he, he didn't know he had a low break in the footing. So that's a failure of the QA, not the QC. Let me give you a, the reverse example. Nuclear densometer equipment. We're doing compaction, proctor, soil density. If I have a green bean technician who's not trained, doesn't know how to work the equipment, or I have an uncalibrated machine, I take the test, I report it, but it's a flawed test. Now that's a breakdown in QC, not in QA. I would say it's really a combo because the training part is the QA part, the QC is actually doing the test. So that's kind of two examples of QC and QA. This is kind of a busy slide, but we're only going to talk about a couple of the key elements. If I don't get buy-in from senior management when we start this process, we stop. Because without the leadership and the commitment and the resources, very little change will take place. So I start with the top management commitment. How many people have a quality mission statement? Something in their company either marketing literature or procedure manual that says quality means this to your firm. If you don't have one, 
I've got four or five different examples. All the big guys have it. Maybe you want to have your own. It could be something as simple as build it right the first time. A quality director. Do you need a quality director? The answer is no. Why do I say that? In today's marketplace, people aren't adding overhead, as you know, probably better than we do. You're cutting back. You're waiting for the market to turn around. So creating a quality department and having a director, ultimately, I think that's a good place to be, but not in the first year. Hiring somebody off the street to be your quality director is the absolute wrong way to go. You need somebody within your company to become a champion on quality management that has the gravitas, the reputation, and is respected within the firm. Who would that person be? We think it's the VP of Ops. Whoever runs field operations should be the quality sponsor, the corporate sponsor of the quality management effort. Could it be the safety director? We put the safety director and give him two hats, him or her. Generally not a good idea for two reasons. One, it splits the message that safety maybe isn't as important as we say it is, because now we're splitting that person's attention. That's number one. Number two, the skill sets are different. Now, one of our customers in Arizona, a different one than the one I was thinking about before, there's a VP of safety and quality. He's got a safety director, he's got a quality director, and he's the VP. He says, quality guys can go to become safety guys, but there's a check valve. Safety guys generally can't go to become quality guys because they have two different perspectives. And I know, Clark, you had some pretty strong feelings about safety and quality mixing and matching. So who else thinks that that's kind of the right approach or does somebody think that you can mix and match? I have an example of a quality director in Arizona, a third company in Arizona that I've been working with, and she's an industrial engineer, and she's a safety director, quality director, and she's a lean director. She owns it all, and she loves it. So it can work, but it's very specific to the skill sets of the person. A quality steering committee, why do we need one? Well, somebody's got to manage this implementation. And so who would I recommend to be on the quality steering director? Certainly the VP of Ops, the President, or the EVP, Human Resources Director, maybe the Procurement Director, maybe the Estimating Department, some overhead people, home office people, and somebody in the field, and I would even put a senior superintendent or two on that committee. And you're going to see that we think that the way to do this is to have the Quality Steering Committee meet monthly during the implementation to make sure the resources and, and the process is moving forward. We're not going to get into the manual, but here's what we have published, and I'm working on an owner manual uh, that we're going to offer to our owner uh, developers. We have a comprehensive, which is 40 pages, including the forms. We have a basic, which is 20 pages, same, same program, less wordy. We have both for non-building contractors, highway heavy, utility guys, and then we have a private sector program. Our program is above and beyond the government program. 
we publish a, a manual that you can use on your government work. We have the government forms, so the government is happy. I hate their forms. But we decided that most of our contractors work, they swing both ways, private government, private government. So why have two manuals? It was confusing. We learned that from one of our Seattle customers. Confusing. So we standardized on the government forms. But you can throw those government forms out because they're really dumb forms and all you do is push paper. How many people use tablets or iPads in the field? There's some great software out there that does this quality management and safety uh, checklists. There's quality management checklists, there's safety checklists, pull down menus, infinitely customizable. And there's three or four players in that space. If you're not using tablets and iPads now, I guarantee you will be using them within three to five years. Will the subs buy in? Not immediately, but they'll all get into the, into the game too. It's a proven program, and we start with the corporate program. The corporate program says that, and you can define this any way you'd like, jobs of a certain size or jobs of a certain complexity will be required to complete a site-specific quality control plan, which will be the mini manual. It'll be the manual following the corporate guidelines, but tailored to the requirements of the project. And we have a template for both. One has the project description, the header, the name of the project, the names of the superintendents, blah, blah, blah. The corporate one is written gener you know, generically about uh, titles, job titles, not names of people. And then what we think our manual does that we don't think you can get anywhere um, is we have a two-page site-specific quality plan that subcontractors complete. If you ask a subcontractor for a quality control plan, they're going to look at you like you just came from Mars. They may have a few things, but they very seldom have anything worthwhile. Think back when you asked them for that site-specific safety plan, and they gave you about a 10 Xerox copy of some other plan that didn't even relate to your project, and you send it back and forth. I mean, we've all been there and done that, right, in the safety world? Well, that's what you're gonna get here in the quality world. I'm not here to say that there aren't some trade contractors that have very good programs. And believe it or not, some of the best are drywall contractors, metal stud guys. I mean, like, why are they ahead of the other guys? I don't know why, but they are, okay? You typically would think the, the electrical mechanical guys are more sophisticated because they're probably practicing BIM. If they're not, they soon will be. Because I think BIM has been part of the revolution here in the last few years as well. We're getting smarter about building our buildings. And it's not just clash detection. BIM is way beyond that. So, um, that's kind of the the big view of the manuals, and again, I can send you copies of any and all of these manuals, free of charge. Just the cost of a lunch. Here are some other uh, items that we have available. We have trade-specific manuals. We have sample construction inspection checklists. We have a whole set of Websites, this is 12 pages of websites, all tying into the various trade organizations. We have a mold risk control procedure. We have this project specific quality control orientation, one page form. We have water intrusion prevention procedure. And then we have pre-install meeting agendas and various other things that we, that we offer. <clears throat> 